After three and a half years, you would think that most Christians understand how Trump has been the most pro-life, pro-Christian, pro-church, pro-Israel president that we've ever seen in our lifetime. The choice is really clear. We're either standing for the truths of the Bible or we're believing the lies of the media. And yet, the battle's not over. We have to actually contend with Christian leaders who are promoting people who support abortion. How did this get to this place? Let me read you a headline. Some evangelicals are urging Christians to vote for Joe Biden. Gary DeMar reports, I was shocked to read that Tremper Longman III, former professor at Westminster Theological Seminary, who presently serves Westmont College as a distinguished scholar of biblical studies, is urging Christians to vote for Biden-Harris. DeMar reports this exchange on social media with the professor. The professor said, Biden is a devout Christian by all accounts, and the Democratic Party is not the anti-Christian party, and neither is the Republican Party. Now, I want to show you the tricks that intellectuals do, okay? Because truth is all we have. We have to defend the truth. We have to understand the truth, propagate the truth. And intellectuals have little tricks that they do. So, first of all, Biden is a devout Christian by all accounts. Well, that's a very grandiose, very solid-sounding claim. But on whose account? Not on my account, not on your account. Have you heard any strong evidence of Joe Biden being a born-again Christian, supporting or quoting biblical values or the scriptures? I haven't. Then he says, the professor, the Democratic Party is not the anti-Christian party. Well, hang on. I don't want a party that's not anti-Christian. I want a party that is pro-Christian. You see how people use ambiguous language like that. It's very common among teachers, professors, schools. They say that. It's kind of like saying, you know, we don't encourage domestic violence. Well, that's ambiguous. What you want someone to say is, no, we strongly oppose and we discourage spouses abusing each other or parents abusing their children. See, that's a much stronger statement and that is in line with the truth. So the professor does these linguistic trickeries to try to sound like it's something you can agree with. Be very careful with that. DeMar then says, Maybe I'm not really shocked since I've been reading and studying the comments of evangelical and reformed Christians for some time. For 40 years, I always seem to wince when I read their comments about politics or the fact that they say nothing about the subject. Fortunately, we're seeing young Christians getting their educations elsewhere and are no longer beholding or beholden, it should say, to the institutional gatekeepers. If they attend credentialed schools, there are enough sources outside the college and seminary gates to counter the nonsense and the silence that goes on in many academic institutions. And how will these never-Trumpers evangelicals be treated once the Democrats are in power? They will be discarded like a pair of worn-out shoes. They will have served their purpose. Now it's time to trash them. And remember that, Christians. The time will come. The Democrats will be in power. Maybe not this year. I prophesied Trump will win in 2016. I prophesied Trump will win in 2020. However, God does not violate free will. And we are not out of the woods yet. Please listen to this video to the end. We are not out of the woods unless Christians know the truth. And there are many Christian leaders and many forces out there that are trying to smear the truth. Gary DeMar says, he says, Longman told us on Facebook that he was voting for Biden some weeks back, and more recently, Sam Logan, the Associate International Director at the World Reform Fellowship, posted this on his Facebook. Three of the many reasons why I, as an evangelical Christian who opposes abortion, will vote for Mr. Biden. Well, hang on. This is the, the deal breaker for Christians. If you are willing to trash to abort, to kill, and to sell the body parts of the most vulnerable citizens of your country, the babies. What are you not willing to do as a politician? So this is the litmus test for Christians. Abortion is the litmus test. Because lots of people abuse power, and they abuse it wantonly, they make arbitrary rules, and they're able to do it against adults who can fight back. So their power is held in check because adults can fight back. But if you're willing to do it to kids, 
who cannot fight back. That really shows a level of evil that you cannot trust with political power. So he says the three reasons, this other famous prominent Christian says, three reasons he will vote for Mr. Biden. Number one, the implicit warnings about our current POTUS presented in Eric Alterman's book, When Presidents Lie. Okay, well, I don't even know who this guy is and who cares. And what does it mean, the implicit warnings? What about the warnings of the Bible? Number two, the incredible list of lifelong Republicans, many of whom work closely with Mr. Trump, who are publicly opposed to his re-election. Right? Well, that's called the rhinos, the Republicans in name only. We'll get to them in a second. Number three, the public statements about Mr. Trump by close members of his own family. I'll let DeMar answer this. I'm a bit mystified by Logan's logic. Perhaps he can name one or two politicians who do not lie, but I'm not going to hold my breath. And while there's no doubt that a raft of establishment Republicans hate Trump's guts, I'm guessing that that may actually reflect favorably on Trump. Finally, while I've gathered that the Trump family has been somewhat dysfunctional, the fact that some members of the larger Trump clan don't like its best-known member just may be neither here nor there. Perhaps Logan has the inside scoop on the Trump family dynamics, but I doubt it. Color me unconvinced. What is clear is that a fair number of evangelical elite types are registering their support for Biden, the candidate of the Democratic Party. Now, such people won't come right out and say that they support the policies of the Democratic Party platform, pretty much unrestricted access to abortion, the transgender agenda, and so forth but a Biden victory in November will clearly advance those causes. We can speculate as to whether such people have softened on some of these moral issues. I suspect that the answer to that question will vary from person to person. But what is clear is that the issue is antipathy to Trump and what he represents. Now let's talk about other forces that are trying to sway the election that are supposedly on the conservative side. Here's another headline. Jeb Bush consultants working to help Joe Biden, Kamala Harris win Florida. Remember, Florida was the battleground state. And it's reported here, a group of Republicans who want to rid their party of President Donald Trump is making a hefty investment to turn Florida blue. Okay, blue is Democrat for those who are outside the United States. Officials with Republican voters against Trump, a national super PAC, said Monday they would begin a campaign aimed at persuading politically moderate Floridians to back Joe Biden, hopeful that the support of those voters can swing the battleground state and possibly the presidency toward the Democratic presidential candidate this fall. The former Bush consultants and Never Trump group have branded the effort Project Orange Crush. It's a little play on word on orange being the fruit of Florida and also the orange man. And they're spending between $8 million to $10 million in the next couple of months on advertising targeted to the moderate Republican voters and swing voters. So look at the money that slushes around just to smear someone. You see, when we as a church want to build a building that will glorify God for $1.5 million, people say, oh, why do you need to do that? And yet in politics, they will spend hundreds of millions of dollars just on ad. So just think about that. Where would be the most productive use of our finances in the kingdom? A memo that was obtained by the Herald reads this way. Our plan is to surgically target the key 450,000 independents and soft Republicans who will decide the election. So you imagine that. Are we out of the woods when we've got Christian, prominent Christian professors and we've got Republican leaders trying to work against Donald Trump? And this is why I felt the Lord tell me to compile for the body of Christ President Trump's pro-Christian accomplishments. This will be the first time that most of you have seen a list of this kind. It is comprehensive. It is amazing. I mean, if you took the name Trump out of the book, if you took the name Trump out of the accomplishments and you just read them, you know what? Most of us would be so proud to have a pastor like that, to have a leader like that, never mind a president of the United States of America who does all this. But it's all colored and twisted 
when the name Donald Trump is associated with it. So I want to show you objectively a very comprehensive list of what has gone on, what has God been doing for the past three and a half years, and to separate the facts from the fiction. And so many times the media will not even show you these things. So please uh, get this book when it comes out. I'm giving you this pre-announcement so that you would pray for it, so that you'd get ready for it. I believe by next week we will have it out. Amazon is who we print with, and they decide, you know, the cost. We put on a margin on top, but what I'll do is, for the first seven days when this book is out, we're going to make it especially cheap. We're going to make it especially affordable, so that those of you out there who have already emailed me and said, I'm going to get a hundred of these books and give it to undecided voters, seekers, Christians who have just believed the lying media, the corporate media, I'm going to get lots of these books. For the first seven days when this is out, I'm going to make it really, really cheap. Don't forget that YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, they don't like this. You know that we're not allowed to advertise any of these things that might help Trump. They always reject our ads. They disapprove it. So if we get the platform of some of our videos you're not seeing, please come and support us at discoverchurch.online. Some of you may ask, well, what business does the church have to talk about leadership, to talk about what's going on in national politics? Well, you know, if it wasn't for the church, we wouldn't have the abolitionist movement. We wouldn't have anti-slavery. We wouldn't have most of the civil rights movements. All of these things were done in the church. Why? Because the church is the moral institution of society. And this is why evil, corrupt politicians want to silence the church and minimize the church. Because morality is preached, morality is upheld, and immorality and corruption is questioned by the church. So you can go and take a look at old leaflets all the way back from the 1800s. And you can see that anti-slavery meetings were held. Here's an example in the Methodist Church at Millville and also at Blackstone Town Hall. You see, separation of church and state doesn't mean politicians get a free pass and they cannot be held to account by Christians. No, separation of church and state means the state has no business silencing our religious freedom. We have a right to worship God. We have a right to follow our conscience. We have a right to preach and teach biblical truths. And anyone who opposes those biblical truths, they don't deserve our support. And you need to look at a man by his fruits. Again, this is why I wrote President Trump's pro-Christian accomplishments. I don't support Republican or Democrat. My job is to preach the truth. Your job is to seek out the truth. Your job is to vote according to the truth. Take a look at this list of Trump's pro-Christian accomplishments and see if it will change your mind and convince you God is making America godly again. Now, the book is not out and ready yet, so make sure that you subscribe to our mailing list. Just go to discoverchurch.online. Okay, and at discoverchurch.online, you can also become a contributing member of our Christian network. We're gathering like-minded believers from all around the world, and we fellowship together, and we're getting spiritual feeding. We're growing together, and we're working on projects together. That's what the kingdom of God should be, advancing God's agenda, Jesus' agenda here on earth. How to be a member? You have three different tiers that you can join, much like Patreon. You know, people use Patreon and Subscribestar to raise support. Well, this here is our own platform with our own mobile app. So that way we're not losing 20% to administrative fees to a secular company. All right, we're still on Patreon. If you want to use Patreon, you prefer it, that's fine. But if you want to come on board directly with the ministry, you can choose from these three tiers. $22, $58, $120 a month. You get different rewards. There's also an option for lifetime membership. Right? What does that mean? That means every video that we've ever put up, even Bible school courses, is yours. Discipleship path for one year, it's yours. And any future video that we put up on this platform, they're all yours. So that's for the lifetime member. I think very affordable. Within one or two years, it will have already paid itself off. So thank you for your support. Make sure you get this book on Amazon.com. 